Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Blackmagic Fusion. And today we're going to be taking a look at an interesting technique that uses expressions and other tricks to create Lissajou figures. So Lissajou figures are a fascinating phenomenon and they were first described in 1815 by the American mathematician Nathaniel Bowditch, but they were named after the French physicist Jules-Antoine Lissajou. So what it is, is when a particle is influenced simultaneously by two simple harmonic motion patterns at right angles to each other, the resultant motion of a particle traces a curve, and that curve is called a Lissajou figure. If you look online, you'll see some great practical experiments to demonstrate this using things like a bucket of sand on the end of a piece of string. But we're going to be looking at doing it digitally in Fusion. So let's get started. So I'm going to start with the background node. Let's make this grey and let's make it a thousand pixels square. Have a look at that. So then let's make another background node. And this one that I'm going to make 500 pixels square. And let's just change its color. Anything will do something like this. So I'm going to add a circular mask to that. Let's just merge it over our background. Have a look at that. So I'm going to make the ellipse 0.9 by 0.9. Turn off solid, 0.9, not 0.8. Turn off solid and let's have a border width of 0.01. Then with our merge, I'm going to position this down in the bottom left hand corner. So that's 0.25 on X and 0.25 on Y. Then we're going to take that and merge it over itself. And in our second merge, we're going to move this up to the top right hand corner. So it's 0.75 on X and 0.75 on Y. And that now looks like that. So then I'm going to copy this ellipse and background, Command C, Command V, and let's merge it over our result here. Let's change this background color, go for white. Let's change this ellipse size to 0 0.05 and let it set it to solid with no border width. So now I want to animate this little white dot to follow each of these two circles. So I'm going to look at this circle here first of all. So after that background and before the merge, I'm going to add a transform tool. And then we're going to come to the transform center and we're going to modify with expression and we'll come over to the modifiers panel. So we're going to add an expression to point one. And what we're going to do here is after that first point five, we're going to type plus N1 and after the second 0.5, we're going to type plus N2. So let's now set an expression for number one. Create an expression here. So this is going to be sine, S-I-N, open brackets, time divided by open brackets, N4 times N9. Close brackets, close brackets, times N3. And then we're going to copy that and we're going to set an expression for N2, paste that in there and then we're going to swap the sign for cos. And then just going to come over to the, the point expression and enter P1X and P1Y. Let's come back to our numbers here. I'm going to enter a value of 4 for number 4, number in 4 and a value of four for number nine. Then before I do anything else, I'm just going to come to the merge here and I'm just going to move it into position into this bottom left hand corner. So again, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 for both X and Y. So let's come back to our transform modifiers and we just need to adjust this N3 number. So I'm going to go for 0.45 and you'll see that's put it on the edge of the circle. So now we get the dot rotating around the circle. So what we're doing here is something very simple and useful. Using sine on one of the position values and cosine on the other and using time to drive them creates this circular orbiting effect. 
For more on this, I'd urge you to watch my expressions tutorial, which I'll link to in the comments. And so what we're doing with these other values, number three, as you saw, was just, was just positioning the dot on the edge of the circle. Number four is the speed of the rotation. And number nine is just going to be a multiplier for the speed of the rotation. And I'll explain why we're using that later on. I need to make sure that number nine is set to one or something. There we go. So then I'm going to hit F2 to rename this transform as ball A. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it and paste it. And let's rename it as ball B. Then I can take my dot shape, pipe it into ball B, and pipe the output of ball B over that merge. Let's look at the result. So we've got another ball here, and we need to just make some adjustments to it. So first of all, I'm going to adjust its merge position, so it's in the top right. So let's go for 0.75 and 0.75. And now you'll see that they're both following their respective circles, obviously at the same speed. Now the whole principle of this is to see what happens when these move at different speeds. And that's what creates the Lissajou effect. So what we're going to need to do is to be able to control the ratio of the two movements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to ball A and I'm going to use number five here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish it. So that'll allow me to come to ball B. And instead of using number four there, I'm going to connect that to ball A center number in five. So then I need to come back to ball A. And here, number five, I need to just change that value. So I'm going to go for five for that. And let's look at the result. So now, you can see that we've got those two moving at different paces. But what we're also going to need to be able to do is to have our multiplier here, our number nine multiplier, as something that can be accessed by our ball B transform as well. So let's publish that number nine value, come over to ball B, and here it's number nine, we're going to connect to ball A's number nine. And now I can control everything from this panel here. So number five is the speed of this ball here. And this is the multiplier that will apply to both, both balls. So I can set that to four. And we play. You'll see they're moving nice and slow. So that's the, multi the, the higher the value for the multiplier, the slower the overall effect. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to create some lines that are connected to these balls that are going to help us to identify the Lissajou pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bit of space here. And again, I'm going to make a new background. This time I'm going to make it 1000 pixels wide by 5 pixels high. And let's make it red. And then here I'm going to add a merge after my background and I'm going to add that over the top. And you'll see I've now got that red line there. Now what we want to do is we want to get this red line to follow this bottom left hand ball. So to do that we're going to come to the merge and we're going to add an expression to that center value. And we're just going to modify this expression so we're happy with the with 0.5 for the x value. We just need to adapt the y value. So I'm going to type ball a, which is the name of our ball that we want to reference, dot center dot y over 2. Now it's really important when you're entering references to other parameters that you get the formatting exactly right. Ball a here is the name of my source transform node. And you'll notice that it has no space and the capital A and the capital B must be entered correctly. Notice also that center uses the American spelling. And the position parameter that we're referencing, in this case Y, has got to be uppercase. Of course, you could always do it the lazy way and use Pickwhip, 
But it's a good idea to train yourself how to do it this way because often it's a lot less fiddly. And hey, it makes you look much more professional, doesn't it? So let's have a look at what we've now got. So now that line is following the vertical position of that ball. And we can do the same thing with the other one. But we need to make a variant of this background. So I'm going to copy that background and paste it. And then I'm going to just change its width and height. So five pixels wide by a thousand pixels high, because we want this to be vertical. Let's make a little bit more space here and pipe that over the top of that. So we've got a new merge. And let's actually look at the final result. We can do the same thing with this merge here. So we're going to add an expression to the center and we're going to adapt not the Y value this time, but the X value. So I want to leave that 0.5 there and I'm going to do 0.5 plus ball B dot center dot X over two. And then let's look what happens. So now our vertical line is following the dot in our top right circle. So now we can finally look at creating the liturgy effect. And so what we want to do is we want to have a dot that follows the intersection of these two lines. And then we'll be using a trails to get it to draw a line. So I think I'm going to copy this ellipse here, the white ellipse. So the background and its mask, copy and paste. Let's just change that background color to something different. And then we're going to pipe that over the top of our final merge there. So to animate this, I'm going to add a transform before the merge. So add a transform there. And then I'm going to select the center and I'm going to modify with expression. So let's come over to the modifiers here. Point one, I'm going to connect to ball a center point result. Let's come back to the transform center. Point two, I'm going to connect to ball B center point result. Come back to the transform center. So then what we're going to do is we're going to come to the position here. And for the X expression, I'm going to type P2 X. And for the Y expression, I'm going to type P1 Y. And finally, I need to come to my merge and I need to position it in the right place. So the X value is going to be 0.75 and the Y value is going to be 0.25 because that's this our bottom right hand corner of the frame. So now you'll see that our dot is nicely following that intersection. I'm just going to increase this timeline to a thousand frames long. And so for our final step, after that transform, I'm going to add a trails. And then we come to the beginning. I'm just going to restart the trails. Let's see what happens. So we've got our nice Lisa Zhu drawing. And we can have hours of fun with this. So the thing to remember here is that ball A is the thing that's driving everything. So this expression here, and it's these two values here, numbers four and five. So what we could actually do is we could come over here to the number controls and we could rename those. So number four is the divisor and number five is the dividend. So we can come back and you'll see those names have changed. It makes it a little bit easier to understand. So currently we're looking at five over four. So let's instead look at three over two. And we need to just reset our trails and then have a look at it. And you can see it's a much simpler pattern like that. Now you'll notice that obviously our trails is not creating a, a full line and we've got these separate dots. And that's the reason I've added the multiplier here. I'm going to just restart that. If we come to the ball A modifiers, remember we, our number nine was this factor that we could multiply our basic divisor and dividend by. So I'm just going to increase that number. Let's go for say six and then restart it. And you'll see it's much smoother 
and slower. So really, we just need to set that speed to be something that, that, that makes it smooth enough. Actually, let's go for 10 even there. And again, restart the trails, have another look at it. You can see it's starting to be much more joined up like that. So depending on the complexity of the, the shape, you'll want to adjust the speed. So I urge you to have fun with different values for the divisor and dividend. The classic ratios tend to be whole numbers separated by one. So for example, one over two, three over two, five over four, and that kind of thing. But you can experiment with anything you like. Obviously, if the values are the same, so let's enter 10 by 10, restart the trails, what we get is a perfect circle. So a circle is in fact the simplest instance of a Lissajou curve. Very interesting. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much indeed for watching and stay safe and well.